All right. Thank you, everyone can see me now. And let's give that a round two. Uh, hi again, uh, this is Dr. Box from Switchboard. And I'm very excited to be presenting to you today. I'm really uh, honored to be helping build out some of the Aptos primitives and that there is so much interest. And we are always looking to help any builder in the space. So with that, I wanna to present to you some, to some toolings that we're gonna be offering to Aptos on launch and how you can take advantage of permissionless data feeds with Switchboard. So what do I mean when I say Switchboard is permissionless? I mean that uh, we're basically a protocol. If you wanna actually do something with an Oracle protocol, like we are, uh, you have two mechanisms. You can either be an Oracle operator, which you are incentivized to answer requests from the web and pull them on chain for some monetary gain, or you wanna make data feeds and pull data on chain for your DAP. Uh, when we say permissionless, we mean permissionless in that DAP usage model. Uh, so uh, in that model, uh, you can actually go on Switchboard and make a data feed for whatever your heart desires. We have a whole design language that our oracles understand. You can build this and we have a whole no code UI for this as well that I'll get into later and start pulling data on chain with five second intervals with that whatever interval you want. We have a lot of customizations um, for you. <clears throat> And not only that, we actually offer a VRF on Solana currently. We are planning on bringing it at us, and this is verifiable randomness, if you're not familiar. And it turns out randomness is really hard on chain. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so if you're not too familiar with what oracles are, oracles are an intermediary between the blockchain and the web. Uh, and it really comes down to uh, when you make a web request, uh, versus a request on the blockchain. If all nodes uh, or uh, validators on the blockchain were trying to come to consensus on something, they would all actually receive a different value. So it's all really, it's actually really difficult for them to agree on a true answer when they're pulling something from off chain. And oracles actually have mechanisms to uh, help uh, designate what the best answer is by having different consensus mechanisms that we as Switchboard allow you to customize uh, pretty freely. And I'll get into that now. But just in a uh, brief overview, what I just said, oracles are essentially a uh, a little more complicated proxy to have high, really high integrity for data that you're pulling on chain. Uh, so some use cases for data feeds. So let's say you're making some DeFi protocol and you need a price of an, ad, of an asset for actually uh, collateralized lending or to actually know liquidation rates for um, uh, any leverage market your, your uh, users are putting themselves in position for. Uh, oh, that was my second point right there. Fantastic. Or if you want to actually use this for creating a prediction market, you can actually pull uh, sports values on chain as well. So any quantitative data you might want, you can actually use Switchboard to bring that on chain. So what do we off actually offer? Well, we built this really cool publisher tool that you can go and have this whole no code UI that you can actually drag and drop all these jobs, when I say a job, it's basically a specific type of action that oracles understand. And you can uh, chain these in very specific ways to pull very interesting data. Like you might have an action that pulls a result from a REST API, and then you have another action that pulls out some numeric field, and then another action that multiplies it by some constant that you uh, uh, is more meaningful to your application. Uh, we also offer a catalog where we actually incentivize people to go map the web uh, and link them to single data points uh, that can be represented on the blockchain. Uh, so people don't have to go and make these uh, really complex jobs to pull uh, certain types of data themselves. And we offer full customizability as well. Uh, and what I mean by that is that you can actually choose your integrity levels. Um, so you can decide how many oracles have to, have to respond to your request and how much they can actually deviate um, for you to accept an answer from them. So you can really customize the trustworthiness of the off-chain applications bringing information on-chain. Uh, one thing I didn't mention here, which I think is really cool for Aptos, is if you're publishing your own data, you can actually charge other users for reads for your data to be used in their applications. There's another monetary gain for any data publishers as well. So this architecture diagram might look a little complex, but there's only four main components that you really have to think about. There are oracles, bottom left. There are jobs, uh, top left. Uh, there are data feeds on the right. Uh, and there are Oracle queues, which we didn't really represent here, but all of the Oracles that are sitting here are on the same queue. And when you as a user actually wanna make a new data feed, 
you can go make uh, a set of jobs that you fit in this data feed. Uh, and those will all be aggregated together uh, when they actually get resolved by oracles. And once you make this data feed set with your jobs, you can do something called uh, opening a new round, which actually launches a request off chain for the oracles to listen to. And if the oracles are actually pick up that um, that request, they can go do the off chain uh, mechanisms that are described in the jobs that you defined, put their results back on chain, and then let the aggregator account on chain come to consensus on the best answer from all the results. And I actually didn't talk about the queue very much. The queue is just a mechanism for allocating which oracles are going to actually answer that update request. So really, you see this whole complex structure. It's not that hard when you get into it piece by piece. And we're always happy to help on Discord. I think we're a very active team in helping out the community. So here, with that, let's actually go look at the publisher tool that I talked about earlier. Let me find um, let me minimize this if I can. There you go. Beautiful. So let's go into the publisher tool, publish.switchboard.xyz. And let's go and say Solana, because that's been live for a little bit longer, and connect our wallet. Great. So now we're in this publisher tool. And this, this is what I was talking about when I said that uh, people are actually incentivized to go curate a catalog of data points off chain and bring them on chain. You go in here, you can see a bunch of crypto data points. Might take a little bit to load the whole data store. This is all decentralized, by the way. Anyone can go make a copy of this data of this data store. All the data is posted on Aleph. Um, it's taking a little longer than usual, but here, let's go back. Um, let's try one more time. And if it's actually just out being slow for our node, let's just go make a custom data feed ourselves. Yeah, it is fine. Let's go back. So let's go make a custom data feed. And this is actually the whole drag and drop tool uh, that I uh, mentioned before, where you can actually link a certain um, complex layers of tasks and make them into uh, very simple jobs to pull information on Jane with. So let's make an HTTP task. I pulled this before. Oh, I wanted to get to this URL. Yeah, this is a DevNet Martian wallet. Go uh, and play with that if you like, but that's nothing. There you go. Add another job. Uh, we actually want to uh, edit this job. We're not done here. So we actually want to parse out a specific tool, uh, a specific field. We can go and parse out the price field. Fantastic. And then we can actually say add this job and continue. We name this feed BTC USD. And then we add this to our cart. And once we're here, we can go to our checkout and say, oh, we're about to make this BTC USD feed. We can review anything about it. We can actually decide on the update interval and the length of time we want to support this feed for. So let's say we want to update this every five second interval for one day. And we go to checkout. And we create our feed. And now, since Solana has pretty strict uh, packet sizes for transactions, we have to approve two or three transactions to get this all set. And then this will be on chain. Great. And then we view the feeds. And you can see that the BTC USD is already being populated with new values. And it's when you actually publish a feed, it's automatically matched with new oracles in that Oracle queue that I described before. So it takes that little work to be auto automatically matched to oracles and start uh, pushing data on chain from any source that you like. So we try to make it as simple as possible and user-friendly as possible. So beyond that, we actually also have the VRF product in which uh, not a single party can ever predict randomness on chain. And you might wonder why this is needed because uh, the most recent block hash might be a pretty decent source of randomness uh, from the user's perspective. But actually, in most blockchains, that is completely up to the leader of the current block to decide which order of transactions uh, will actually finalize in this block. And given that uh, the leader can choose that, they can actually choose the, an advantageous block hash for themselves if they were ever to take part, part in some randomness that this VRF, uh, VRS downstream application was actually being used for. So we want to actually take away the power of randomness from that block producer. And what the VRF actually does is it has one party that holds a secret key and a public key and another party that actually uh, requests a seed. And this seed, as long as it's never uh, being used before, is 
uh, you cannot predict the output of this randomness if it's encrypted with, well, not encrypted, but if it's processed with the secret seed of this randomness producer, which is in our case, the Oracle. So one party actually produces a seed, the other party has a secret, and the output of that can actually be verified with something we call a proof to make sure that the randomness producer actually used the seed that the user claimed uh, to produce this randomness. So the randomness producer could actually never predict what the randomness would be before the seed was chosen. And the client can never predict the randomness because they didn't have the secret key. So when you actually wanna make uh, a randomness request, at least on Solana currently and after soon, uh, what you would do is you would make something that we call a VRF account to store all the data for your intermediate processing for your randomness request. Uh, this randomness request will be launched out to that same Oracle queue that I talked about before. And a set of oracles will be assigned to it to use their randomness seeds, uh, well, their randomness keys with a seed that was chosen when a VRF randomness request was launched. And it will take a few seconds for the oracles to process this, and then they will give you a result back in a few seconds after that. Uh, a few uses for VRFs could be uh, any game theory logic you want to implement, like a coin flip. If you want to actually have true randomness in NFT minting, you can use uh, verifiable randomness and also no loss lottery protocols. So there's plenty of use cases and we're happy to help out with um, any uh, any use cases that you might wanna uh, play with. So just ping us if you need any help. So now let's go to a VRF mini game demo that we built for you, just to show you uh, the whole flow here. Uh, let's connect a wallet. Great. And if we wanna just play on this, we could do uh, user, play. Uh, now we want to guess if it's one or two for the coin flip, and we want to bet one soul. We can build this betting request, approve the transaction, and the request is launched the oracles. Now the oracle is going to use its secret key to process a VRF response with the seed that was chosen by uh, the VRF account when we actually launched this request. And this could take uh, 10, 15 seconds just for the block processing, processing speed. And then we'll get a result if we're a winner or a loser. Oh, it looks like I stink and I lost my bet. But oh well. Um, so yeah, these are the products that we offer for Switchboard that are coming to Aptos uh, very soon. We already have the Aptos Dev that implementation launched for feeds. And please feel free to use this uh, QR code to see more about our um, operations, our protocol, and if you need any help. So I'll pause there. And uh, thanks for listening, guys.